I get to try a dinosaur bone. For in the old, old days, know that? Yeah? Yeah. She is only six, but her body could be as old as 60. Oh, look, Ash. Yeah. When we're dealing with the aging process. This is something that the whole world is interested in. The idea that aging can one day be cured is much more than a fanciful dream. Ashley's the only one in Canada with this. It is so rare. It's so different. They're short, they're bald, they're skinny, they have a little tiny nose and fairly big eyes and a little tiny mouth and they're just so small and frail. Ashley Hagee will soon be six. Go check this out. It's a rat in the water. Ashley lives in the small Midwestern Canadian town of Lethbridge, Alberta, with her mother, Lori. Lori had Ashley when she was just 17. Do you have a good sleep? Ashley's father was in his early 20s and unable to cope. Lori asked him to leave before Ashley was a year old. You sure slept in good. I was really good. I was sleeping. She has been raising Ashley on her own ever since. Yeah, let's do this in that corner. Okay. Within hours of giving birth, Lori noticed that Ashley wasn't like all the other little girls. Before we left the hospital, Ashley had blue around her eyes and her mouth. We noticed that right away. Through x-rays, they found that she had a hole in her heart. We made a trip up to Calgary to see a specialist, and the third time, he told us that it had just closed on its own. I think you're doing this all by yourself here. But then, within three months of her birth, her skin was really tight. It was really thin. We went through a year of testing. We spent a couple weeks in Children's Hospital in Calgary, and we just didn't have a clue as to what she had. She's having needles poked in her and skin cut off her, and it was just a big guessing game. When Ashley was nine months old, her hair began to change color and fall out. By the time Ashley was one, Lori realized that her baby girl wasn't growing. It took 15 months to figure out what Ashley had. By accident, her pediatrician in Lethbridge had seen an article, and I think it was the Inquirer, of a little girl who had progeria, and so then she had come up with the diagnosis of progeria. I had no idea, not even a clue of what it was. And um, I went to the library shortly after that and I did my own research. And what I found scared me. Progeria is a rare disease that looks like premature aging in children. By the time they get to be teenagers, they are very old looking, like little old people. And they may suffer a heart attack, they may also have strokes and disabilities of, uh, related to having a stroke. Uh, and typically by the time they're 13 or 14, they're having major problems. The average lifespan turns out to be about 13. It was very 
um, devastating at the time to find that your your child, you know, has something that's, for one thing, so incredibly rare and so incredibly unbelievable. Like, I find it really, it's really unbelievable. Ashley! Your tub's ready! Progeria comes from a Greek word meaning prematurely old. You should see all the bubbles. <laughs> For every year they live, progerics age 8 to 10. By the time Ashley was two, her bones were losing calcium. At four, she suffered migraines. By five, the pain had spread. She has a lot of pain in her arm or her leg. She gets a lot of fuzziness in her limbs. I don't know what's causing all this, whether it's arthritis or osteoporosis. I know it's probably all of the above, but things are just really starting to happen with her. Ashley! <laughs> what are you doing right now, me? The medical term for Ashley's disease is Hutchinson-Guilford syndrome. Are we putting some on your head? No. Cheeks and nose? No. No? Okay. Arms up. Arms up. The disease is named after two British scientists who first described it in 1886. That's called lotion. The symptoms include weak bones, lack of muscle, hardened arteries, and heart disease. All the symptoms of old age. Uh, okay. Ashley cannot take the powerful drugs used to treat the elderly. Some of her vital organs are still developing. Prescription drugs might cause her permanent damage. For the joint pain and the stiffness, Tylenol helps that. It's not a problem for her after she takes her medication. This is heavy, heavy, heavy. Good job. Thank you. Let's play hide it. No one in Lethbridge fully understands Ashley's disease. No one in Canada either. The closest expert is 1,700 miles away. Seeing the children with this striking disease, it just captured my imagination and convinced me that um, if we understood the cause of this disease, then it would probably give us a big uh, lead on understanding what the cause of aging was. For centuries, the cause of aging has been a mystery. Many scientists contended that aging was primarily caused by forces outside the body. In 1959, a California-based scientist accidentally proved that theory wrong. Aging was considered to be an intractable biological process, a phenomenon that occurs if for no other reason through the second law of thermodynamics, that is, as a function of time, things change, even the universe. Humans don't ordinarily surrender a part of their normal tissue willingly, and as a consequence of that, we uh, had to turn to different uh, sources. The first breakthrough in aging research occurred by accident 
When Len Hayfleck happened to notice that an infant's cells far outlived those of an elderly person. Aging, he reasoned, could not then be the result of outside forces. It had to be a process controlled at least in part by forces within the cells. What we uh, found was that after roughly 50 divisions, the cells began to slow down. And after uh, a couple of months, they stopped dividing entirely. And over a period of many months, the cells ultimately died. It was clear from our work that there must be a clock. What is it and how does it work? And today, after 30 years of effort, certainly in my laboratory and many other laboratories, without getting very close to an answer, we now have what we think is the answer. Based in Menlo Park, California, Geron Corporation is one of the first biotechnology companies in the world solely devoted to developing drugs to treat aging. The search for Hayflick's clock finally ended here. In 1994, Geron researchers found what scientists everywhere had been looking for for more than 30 years. Inside every cell are chromosomes which control all the cell's functions. At the end of every chromosome is a protective cap called a telomere. Every time a cell divides, this telomere wears down. Eventually it becomes so worn down, it can no longer protect the chromosome. The cell dies. Cell death is what causes aging. As it turns out, some people's cellular clocks are set to run out sooner than others. In progeria, we found a significantly reduced telomere length, which was related to the reduced lifespan of those patients. We may be able to do something for individuals, but whether this is going to have a major impact on specific age-related diseases or, or the lifespan of these individuals with dramatically shortened uh, lifespans, it's too early to tell. Five mornings a week, Ashley Hagee attends kindergarten at a local elementary school. Joanne Hagee is the secretary to the principal at Ashley School. Well, hello. Can you put my stuff in there? Oh, sure. Have we got room on my desk? She is also Laurie's mother. My sticky thing. Your sticky hand? Joanne and Laurie were constantly at odds until Ashley came along. Put your gloves in your pocket or something? Do you want to put them in my desk too? Yes. You, she needs these today for yeah. the computer? Okay. It's kind of hard to think that she's older than I am. In a normal life, the parents usually go before the children or the grandparents go before the grandchildren. You know, inside, she's older than either one of us. All right, ready to roll? Yeah. Okay. Except you're forgetting something. Yes. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> Love you. See you later. Yeah. You that you play in the gym today? Yeah. Mom, every time you, every time you watch... Ashley stands a little over two feet tall and weighs just 20 pounds. Her size, voice, and appearance all set her apart from the other students. Ashley's first few days at school were difficult. A special meeting had to be called. All right, so we put the book back. And who's next to get Panda? Who's getting Panda next? 
You're a little bit late today. <laughs> it's okay though. Okay, I'll see you after. Oh, Lacey! Hello, you! And then Mark. And then Mark. So Lacey gets panda next, and then Mark. Ashley, you missed... The students haven't been the only ones who've had to learn to make some adjustments. At first I thought, how am I going to avoid staring at her? Because she's so different from all the other children in her looks. Daddy's work. And this is him standing in the house with all of her family, and it's snowing. But surprisingly, she's such a charmer that after you meet her the first couple of times and you get to talk to her, you look right past that. She doesn't appear mentally to be a 50, 60-year-old. Physically, you can see it. You can see the way she walks. Uh, the aches and pains, you can see that there's things that bother her. But mentally, she's a five-year-old little girl. Let's find a D. This is about the same, except we have a card like this like a big one. The first person You got it. Put it on the table in front of you. And pretty soon, we're going to have a word spell. And then, if, if anybody can figure out what the word is spelling, you say, I know what you're spelling. And I'm that's a now. You know already. I betcha. How do you know already? <laughs> you know what? You got it right. I don't know how you did that with one letter. Well, we're going to spell it out and then we'll tell you. She guessed it. I don't know how, but she guessed it. Progerics do not suffer from Alzheimer's or any of the other mental diseases associated with growing old. While their bodies age so rapidly for reasons not fully known, their minds are spared. Intellectually, they're bright little kids. Usually they're, they're doing, doing quite well in school for the first five to eight years of schooling. They attend normal schools and do quite well. And so they're, very, they're not really mature beyond their years, but they're uh, uh, bright and above average in intelligence, typically. One reason progeria is such a mystery is that it does not run in families. Progerics are unable to reproduce. Scientists view the disease as a biological accident that occurs prior to conception. All it takes is one slightly damaged sperm out of 100 million, or one damaged egg. If progeria were more prevalent, scientists could do a detailed study. But just as Ashley is the only known progeric in Canada, there are only eight in the United States and 26 worldwide. With so little to go on, scientists in the aging research field have been forced to look elsewhere. revealed a second accelerated aging disease. Because it occurs in middle-aged adults, this second disease can be passed from one generation to the next. It can therefore be traced. The disease is called Werner's syndrome. Based in Amiens, France, Dr. Charles Puissant has devoted the past 10 years to tracking Werner's cases throughout Europe. Werner's syndrome is a segmental uh, aging. It means that that is uh, uh, affecting mainly some uh, systems and not the others. And more precisely, it's, it's affecting a cardiovascular system, skin system, uh, muscles and joints system. Christine Lequin is a 42-year-old mother of four. Diagnosed with Werner's syndrome eight years ago, Christine is experiencing a rapid decline. 
Celui-là, il ne fait rien, mais c'est l'autre. D'accord. Essayez de marcher un tout petit peu. Euh, un pas. Oh. Bon, je... The average life expectancy of someone with Werner's syndrome is 47. Parce que cette maladie-là, ça se guérit pas. Alors, les symptômes, euh, c'est du mal dans les veines, c'est du mal dans les artères, mal très fort aux pieds, et la peau me fait très mal. Et le vieillissement, je vieillis plus vite que d'habitude, que normalement. Et donc, elle est très tendue et en même temps, euh, elle a des tâches, oui. comme, un peu, comme un tout petit peu chez les personnes âgées, mais vous êtes, vous êtes jeune encore. Donc, euh... Jeune et oui. On dirait que... Vous avez mon, 40 ans. Mon corps, on dirait qu'il a 50 ans. Oh. Par moment, Votre je corps ressens. a 50 ans. Vous vous sentez... Je ressens. Quelquefois plus, oui. C'est difficile de assigner un précis âge à tous les symptômes. Mais je dirais qu'elle a l'air comme... 60, 65, about 60, 65, and she knows that, so she feels very frustrated and, and sometimes she feels uh, very de depressive too. J'ai fait plusieurs examens parce qu'il me dit euh, pour vous c'est peut-être trop tard, mais si avec tous vos examens que vous faites on envoie tout aux états unis pour essayer de rechercher cette chose. Alors à ce moment-là, je me suis sentie que j'étais un peu cobaye. Bon, si on peut en sauver, tant mieux. Pour moi, c'est trop tard. For more than 30 years, scientists have believed that the aging process is at least in part controlled by a gene. In the hope of finding that gene, skin samples from various Werner's syndrome sufferers are sent to a few of the world's leading laboratories. Seattle's Veteran Affairs Medical Center is one of the labs involved in the hunt. We started this in about 1990, and from that point on, we worked on uh, cloning the gene. Uh, it was a period of about one week when we went from, we might have it, to we were almost certainly have it, in a few more days, yeah, we've got it. We try and describe it in sober terms, saying we have a gene that tells us something about human aging. We don't have the gene for aging. That gets lost, and I think actually in some of the European press it was the gene that will help you live to be 130 years old. We never said that. Finding the gene that causes Werner's syndrome made front page news all over the world in 1996. But finding the gene may well have been the easy part. The ideal situation is when you see the gene, you get this blinding flash and say, oh my God, I now understand all of aging. And the, the reality is you get this blinding flash that says it's going to take 20 more years to understand what this gene is. The Werner's gene discovery prompted scientists to take another look at progeria. They were eager to know whether the causes of the two diseases were one and the same. If so, science would have moved one step closer to finding a cure for aging. It took one year for scientists to learn that the gene that causes Werner's syndrome is not the same gene that causes progeria. Because progeria is neither common nor hereditary, it simply cannot be approached in a straightforward scientific manner. 
Progeria may be a more difficult problem than Werner's syndrome because of the fact that each case represents a new mutation and it doesn't run in the family. It's not been a disease that we could study by traditional genetic means. We can't do family studies, linkage studies, to try to narrow down the position where the gene might be located because we can't study it in families. For Ashley, this lack of scientific progress comes at a bad time. Every year is another decade for her. In recent months, her health has taken a serious turn for the worse. Ashley had a transient ischemic attack. It's a warning sign of a stroke to come. It's just like a stroke. He suffered the same. She couldn't move her fingers or her hand, except you fully recover from it, whereas with a stroke, you wouldn't recover. She takes the aspirin to thin the blood so that there's less possibility of it clotting because that's, that's what causes a stroke is when you get a, a blood clot. Since she had her mini stroke, she's been having a lot of fuzziness in the finger or her foot or her arm. And that's really frustrating because it's hard to tell the difference between that warning of a stroke and that with a migraine. <laughs> Once a year, the Hagees take an all-expenses-paid vacation somewhere in the United States. Although the trips are very special, They've taken some getting used to. The very first reunion, five years ago, um, I'll never forget it. It was the hardest moment in my life. Um, we got off the airplane, and uh, most of the kids were already at the airport, and they were waiting over in a separate area, sitting down, playing, waiting for us. And it was the first, um, you know, eye-to-eye -eye contact with these other kids. And I just, I just wanted to turn around, get on the plane, and go back home. I just thought, I can't, we can't do this. We can't do this. Just to see all the other kids, because some of them were older, and just the dramatic appearance that they have. And it was very frightening. It scared me. The Sunshine Foundation is a Philadelphia-based charity which has been bringing progerics and their families together since 1981. This year, 23 children will spend a week together at Atlanta Stone Mountain. It's such a feeling of belonging. For them, it's being with someone who is exactly like they are and knows exactly what they're going through. It's the best medicine in the world for that week that they're there. Ashley really looks forward to going on the trips. Well, especially to see John, who is her very best buddy. I want to take a little picture of me, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for my camera back, Mom. <laughs> At nine years old, John Tackett is the oldest surviving progeric in North America. Give her a hug, John. <laughs> Ashley met John on her first trip. Ashley's favorite moment, times, everything is John. He is her soulmate. I truly believe this. That's all she talks about is John. <laughs> that's, uh, that's who she wants to be with. That's who she wants to, to play with and talk to and do things with. It's John. When I first seen John this year, I had noticed that he looked older. I noticed that he has slowed down a little bit, and it saddened me. Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it. 
Come on, Dwight, it's hot over here. It's sad because you kind of wonder if next year who's going to be there and who's not. Because sometimes when you go back, children pass away. And this one was the first one. You know how I can tell? How? Because look, somebody's crying. Me, 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 me. <laughs> how come? Uh, because I don't want my picture. <laughs> you don't want your picture? Yeah. Look at April's trying to hold you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She did a good job. She kept you up there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, Let's see. do finish this one. Who's that? I forget. You forget? Yeah. Danny. Uh, Danny. 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 Yeah. Well, he seems so tall. Yeah? Well, he was older. Uh. He was almost as old as me. Uh. I think he had a stroke. Uh. And then he had to go in the wheelchair because he couldn't walk anymore. Uh. And I think, see how his glasses are? I think he was blind, too. He got a little bit blind from his stroke. Uh. So he had to go in a wheelchair so he wouldn't fall down. Uh. You see? Yes. I don't know what, what we would do or what any of the other families would do if we weren't able to come together once a year. Like, it, it would be so, you'd feel so alone. You'd feel like nobody understood. Because the other families, they really do understand because they're going through the exact same thing that you are. And there's nobody else. There's no one in Canada who I can go drive and see or, or whatever and have them be in the same situation that I'm at, that Ashley's at. I got a good ballot, Ted. You do. Aging researchers can only offer so much hope to people in Ashley's position. Most of their work is aimed at serving the general public interest. It's not probably very realistic to think that we're going to cure these diseases or come up with much in the way of a specific therapy. And, and I think that's understood by the families that uh, you know it's pretty unlikely we're going to cure the, the problems that their children face but there is a, a larger potential benefit to everyone if we understand the process of aging and can modify its effects I don't think the doctors are uh, I don't think they're they're doing it f for the kids I mean I give them a lot of credit they've de they, they've dedicated their lives to researching this, but I really don't think it would be the kids who would be helped if there was anything to be discovered. Oh, there's a little tiny grasshopper. Ashley's caregivers are primarily concerned with the quality of her life day to day. She's alive? They tend to view aging research with a certain amount of apprehension. We don't want Ashley to be like a guinea pig. Um, I know this disease is so amazing that uh, doctors do want to know more about it, but I don't think it's fair to Ashley to put her through unnecessary tests or x-rays um, for the benefit of, say, the uh, physician. The search for a cure for aging will likely continue, with or without Ashley's involvement. This year, $500 million was spent Next year, the amount will no doubt be larger still. Aging researchers feel they're on the verge of a major discovery. I think the long-term prospects still are that we will come to a point where we should be able to slow down the process and become immortal. It's definitely fun to ponder the possibility of, of changing human lifespan, ultimately. Um, I think that, you know, for thousands of years, people have, have dreamed of 
extending the youthful period, looking for the fountain of youth, and I am not immune to that desire. I have to say, I think it's, when I look at these long-lived worms, I think, oh my God, they've found the fountain of youth. Nematode worms and human beings do not appear to have a great deal in common. But there is one quality the two species share. The worm, it ages just like we do. As it gets older, it begins to look old. It, it becomes a little flabbier and it lies still. It doesn't move as well. Nature produces the genetic mutations that make human beings old before their time. Scientists can now produce mutations that have the opposite effect in worms. For anyone interested in the aging process, the implications are clear. When we first got the first mutant that we discovered, we, you know, we had plates with normal old worms in them. And then we looked at the mutant worms, which were the exact same age, but they weren't dead. They were, or dying, they were fine. They were still, and then later on, when the normal worms were just dead completely, you know, that a couple weeks go by, you look at your plates and the worms, these mutant worms are just moving around still, or they might look a little older by that time, but basically they're not dead at all. And so you think, oh my goodness, you know, this worm should be dead. It should be dead, but it's, it's not, it's alive. These long-lived mutants live about 40 days or even more. That would be the equivalent of having a human individual live to the age of 160 years. And that's amazing. But also, if you think of it another way, it would be like having an 80-year-old human very happily still out on the tennis court or riding a bicycle. I think that it's very possible that if we knew why this is, we might be able to extend the lifespan of humans, but these are all just dreams still. Extending the lifespan of humans is no longer so far off. Scientists at the Geron Corporation have found a way to extend the lives of cells. By rebuilding the protective caps found on the ends of chromosomes, Cellular clocks can now be rewound. For people afflicted with aging diseases, there's a chance this could be good news. In the case of progeria, this might lead to therapies or approaches which will uh, allow us to treat those individuals, but because they, it is such a rare, they are very rare disorders, it's, it's difficult to obtain enough material in many cases even to support research in, in hundreds of laboratories and dozens of pharmaceutical industry uh, settings. Scientific research often comes down to dollars and cents. Because it promises to be so lucrative, aging research will likely stay focused on those problems the elderly most commonly face, Alzheimer's heart disease, and cancer. Chances are people with rare aging diseases will be left to their own devices. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Do you have a good sleep? Yeah. Yeah? Do you remember what today is? Mm. My birthday. And how old are you today? <laughs> huh? Wait a minute. <laughs> Try again. I skipped one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Wow. Happy birthday. Okay. You haven't seen anything unusual lying around yet? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you the time tonight when you were born. I'll tell you. I used to think a lot about what caused it, what could cure it, just, you know, my own ideas in my head. But it's something that I just don't want to spend a lot of time doing. I'd rather spend a lot of time with Ashley. Putting her through tests, trial uh, treatments, is just not something that I would consider doing.
I just, I want her to have the, the, you know, most normal life possible. And I don't think being in and out of hospitals or, you know, taking blood from her is going to provide that for her. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I don't know why they're here, but I know they're here for a very important reason because there's so few of them. I mean, I don't think I would be where I am today if I hadn't had Ashley. It almost scares me to think about where I would be. Um, she brought my family together. She, uh, she's made me. <laughs> Ashley has made Laurie a very strong person. She has had to grow up fast, and it has matured her quite a bit. You know, being a single parent is hard in itself. And when you're a single parent with a terminally ill child, it's even harder. But it definitely has made her a very caring person. Oh, did you see this? one of your little ones inside there. Dealing with the aging process, and progeria in particular, always seems to raise more questions than it answers. In the end, scientists have been left with some doubts. I started my career with an interest in trying to slow down the process of aging, and that's still where my enthusiasm lies. Uh, I think I've become uh, convinced with time that that's a pretty uh, hard problem to solve. It's not likely to be solved within our lifespan. Here's the spider. My feeling is that yeah. my role as a scientist is to try to understand how aging works. It's up to society, I think, to decide what to do with that information. Now, whether humans should want to become immortal, I don't know. I mean, I, I think, uh, I know you can see that I'm smiling. It's certainly something that is, is a very attractive idea in principle. Whether we really want to become immortal, I don't really, don't really know. And you are our attendance person, so would you take this down to the office, please? Thank you. Ashley's started grade one now. She's been missing about one morning a week of school because of her migraines and her sore joints, but I mean, we'll take it, you know, see how it goes. It's going to be harder for her as she gets older. Right now, I don't think she thinks too much about how she looks or how she makes other people look at her. Hopefully, she'll have a good friend that can kind of follow her through the grades and um, get her through some of the tough spots when we can't be with her all the time during the day. My dream is just for her to live as long as she can to have a, as normal a life as she can. Just to enjoy the little time she has here with us. That, that's all I want, is just for her to be a happy person. I do hold hope for a cure. I mean, how could I not? This is my daughter, of course. You know, nothing would make me happier.
but it's just not something that I see in our future. Well, hello there. You know where that goes? How are you this morning? Good. Good. Feeling all better and everything? Mm-hmm. Okay. Have a good day, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye. I don't really have, like, you know how some parents, they, they want their kid to grow up and do this. Or, you know, they want to see their child excel in this or, or whatever. Um, I, don't, I don't have that kind of a feeling. Um, I just want Ashley to, to live her life as normal as possible, to touch other people's lives, like she has and she will continue to do. And um, I just want her to be here for as long as she can be, as long as she's meant to be, and be happy. And that's all I want for her. <laughs>